I've been working on a record now. Let me know if you need any uh, high singing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Come in and sing. <laughs> take a rhythm underneath your lead. You just fucking went for it like a fucking maniac. Thank you uh, for entertaining the idea of me singing that song in standard pitch. So, yeah, I, I liked it. Like it. You, once you put some magic sauce on it, it's going to be fine. I'm gonna it's like you're going to have to put some on sauce on my guitar, too. I'm going to put some secret <laughs> sauce on there. And, and maybe some, and I'm, you know what? I refuse to put any pitch magic on my voice. <laughs> I refuse to. <laughs> Uh, I don't have to fix your guitar at all. It's great. <laughs> uh, you've been at this for a while. Yeah, I started uh, 10, 11. 11. 11 years old. Yeah. But I, everyone asks that question uh, when I started. And the thing is, I always associate with... Uh, I, I'm a type 1 diabetic, mm -hmm. and I became diabetic at, around the same time I started getting into the guitar. So it's around that time. So the guitar was sort of like an escape kind of thing sure. and uh which you know worked out to my benefit you know because right. i kind of kind of like was secluded kind of shy kid just played the guitar right seemed to work out your woodshedding seemed to work out just fine <laughs> yeah it helped. so what was your initial inspiration was it kiss where are you from well i'm from queens you're not from here I, I grew up not too far from here 20 blocks down well please tell me that ace freely was your initial it was, it was i was definitely the case but to be honest with you before i started playing guitar and i still have the record it's in it's in my record thing there uh yeah. i was we're watching tv with my mom you know they used to have those vinyl commercials on tv yeah. all right so chuck berry came on and I remember I said, oh, I want to get, can you go get that? You know, so my mom ordered it for me. So it's a two record Chuck Berry set. And I used to do like play around oh, the, the original Dark thing. Chuck Berry yeah, songs yeah. or like covers? No, the original. Oh, that's cool. So I used to pretend to do that duck walk thing and yeah. stuff. And so that was before I started. So that was like my first kind of like, wow, I like the guitar and I like the way it sounds thing. The progress from 10 to 14 was, old, was big. Like I was already in a band now at 14. You were an accelerated player at that point. You were like, yeah, you know what? I was able to play. Shredded. I mean, I was able to play. You know, uh, I was played Stone stuff. I played Good Times, Bad Times. We played, uh, we played, of course, Sympathy for the Devil because I knew the solo. Right. And uh, I was in a band with um, Tommy Boland from uh, the guy from Warlock. Yeah. So we were in the band together. It was called Vision. <laughs> nice. Did you guys spell it weird or anything? No, it was just vision. I still oh, really the missed the opportunity. I know. Then. I learned a lot from Tommy as well. Tommy was a little bit older than me, and he was, he, you know, he he really kind of like when you when you're in a band with somebody. I and I still to this day believe it. But if you join a band, you always want to join a band when the musicians are better because you're gonna get better. At some point, you know, my eighth grade English teacher, this guy Dan Levitt, he would meet me in the music room. 
after school and he played, he had like a pre CBS telly. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like a great guitar player, good singer. And he, he, um, <laughs> Taught me some cool stuff, and at one point he told me that same thing. And I must have really taken it to heart because I'm always the worst person in the band. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'll stick around. Okay, only as good as the people that you play with. Sure. Tell me if you agree with this statement. <laughs> and this is something that I have I've lived by for a long time, and that I, I firmly believe in. Your band can still be a killer band if you have a great drummer. Any other single or combination of your band's members can be even subpar if the songs are at least okay. good and your drummer is killer yeah drummer because if, you're, if your drummer part. sucks your band sucks yeah do you agree I t- with I that t- I, yes i do which parts do you agree with and which parts do you disagree with? i agree with everything you said a singer doesn't have to be that great but if they 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 a good stage presence right. and whatever you know, and the songs are good. They you can get away with it. Motley Crue, yeah. Drumming is the most important part of a band and the most important part on a fucking record. Because if the drums suck, everything goes around that and it sucks. So now what? You get on Vi's right uh, label. You get on his radar. How? I was looking for a label, and I was at Relativity and Steve Vi starting his own record label. So I was like, hmm, I have this finished record. Let me see, you know. So uh, I ended up getting that to him. He ends up getting in touch with me. He said, I listened to it. He says, I like it. He says, but, you know, just getting started with the label. Uh, and he said, uh, I have a lot of stuff to do. He says, you know, may, you know, he was basically saying, no. I said, all right. I says, listen, I said, I'm, I tell you right now, I said, you're going to listen to a lot of stuff. Because I know, because I was working at the label, you're going to get a lot of guitar plays. And I said, I'm telling you, you're going to go back to Martin and you're going to like it. So he's like, yeah, you know, so then, like, it's not, and I, and I also said, listen, I don't want you putting it out if it's something that you're not into anyway, because I want you to like right. it. I want it to be liked where it's going to be released. Yeah, yeah. So that was the end of it. And then, like, I don't know, a couple months later, he got in touch with me and he was like, uh, You're right. He was like, I, I listened to it and I like it. And he says, uh, Let's release it. Let's do a test release in Japan first. And I was like, that's fine with me. Great. And then we did it there, and then he released it in Europe, and uh, and that's kind of how it started. So that then I ended up putting uh, three records through through his label. And you said the record was released in Europe. Did you did you go there and do? I the did. Same I did some. I did some. I did some touring in the UK, which is fun. Which uh, I started to do on my own. It's easy because they speak English there. Yeah. In it. Yeah. Driving that was another thing. See, I don't drive, so that's right. good. But I had to get some guy to help drive. It was crazy. But uh, you don't drive at all. You uh, don't drive here either. No. You know who doesn't drive? My wife doesn't drive. Uh, Never. You said that before. I was going to be like, I'm the I'm the other half of the relationship that doesn't. Drive. <laughs> <laughs> but you but you grew up here, that's so why. like, why? I mean, uh, why bother? Yeah. Right. I've been here for four years, mm. so I'm a real noob. I'm still, you know. Amateur. Athlete. Yeah, I mean, you got, you know, you know what I like about it? You could go, I mean. Once every couple of months, I still get on the train going the wrong fucking way. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I get lost and I'm from here. Right. It's horrible. Right. So that, you know, it's something that you just have to deal with. You know, people, uh, New York has this reputation for, uh, oh, people there are rude. That's terrible. Uh, that's, people are not rude here. That's not true at all. Actually, today is the one-year anniversary of the one and only time I've experienced road rage in New York. I was in a, a car service. The driver was a real boob, and he was making a lot of dodo mistakes. As a passenger, it was a problem for me. But the guy behind us, and this guy was angry. He was he had issues also. Got out of the car, sort of punching the window, mm-hmm. yelling about how he was a veteran and he had PTSD, and threatening to kill the driver. And I like knocked on the window, and I was like, "Hey, man, look." I'm a veteran too. Sorry this guy is not doing a good job, but I just, I need him to get me to work because I'm 45 minutes late already. Can, can you please just fuck off? And he go, and you know what he said? I will kill you too! And I was like, hey, can you step on the gas pedal? It's the one on the right. Let's get the fuck out of here. I think it's time for me to fuck off. Huh? Your, your wife is home, she's probably like, what the fuck is no, going no, on no, out there? No, she knows about Who's it. Who is that creep out there? <laughs> like, uh...